What's up, everybody? What's up, Devoted fan? What's up, C20 fan? Man, I am uh, so excited that you guys are continuing to track along uh, with us and, and our devotions. I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, encouraged that you guys are continuing to meet in your small groups and, and even meet daily. Like, that is so awesome to see that you haven't let uh, what could be a very discouraging time period stop you from continuing to find ways to be with people and talk about the Bible and grow. And, and, and so I'm excited, man. I can't wait till we can get back together in person. Um, but until then, man, I hope that you would continue to meet with each other, continue to, to dive into scripture, continue to see what God is teaching us during this time period. Um, but today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, a topic that's not not necessarily like a fun one to talk about. Um, probably not one you thought you would hear about while we're while we're doing this uh, these devotionals. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about rejection, and I think that um, I felt like this was kind of put on me just because uh, I think in this time period, like we're gonna experience the least amount of rejection, right? We're not we're not at school, um, we're not you know on campus anymore. Like like really, the only people we see are the people who are gonna build us up. And, and what I, why I think that's important is because like rejection, like if, if we're not careful, rejection can, can stop us from continuing to spread, you know, what God has placed on our hearts. Um, but right now, like, like we're encouraging and strengthening one another to, when we get to the point where we get to go out and we get to share what God is doing, like, like when someone rejects me, like. I won't care because I got my people with me who are constantly encouraging and building me up. And so uh, I think, man, right now, like it's so important for us to attack this topic and really dive deep into it because, man, it's something we will experience our whole lives. But right now we get to experience a time period where we're only building each other up. Right. Um, and so uh, if we're looking in Luke chapter four, uh, verses 16 through 30 is the entire uh, set of scriptures. Um, but I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to kind of break it up a little bit. But I'm going to start in, in chapter or in verse 18. It says, um, this is basically Jesus quoting um, Isaiah to uh, the people in the synagogue right now. So it's basically a Sunday. He's out there preaching and teaching. Um, and so he pulls out this scroll and it says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set the liberty, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Which man, this sounds like awesome, right? Like, like this is the year of the Lord's favor. Like God's gonna do some awesome stuff. Like, like for us, like even like when we go out and we say, man, God has done this in my life. Like I've, I was once, you know, depressed and God has healed me of that, or I've once was um, sick and God healed me of that, and and maybe all these different things, and and we have this good news, right? And 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 we're carrying this good news all the time. Um, and then it, Jesus, then he, he rolls up this scroll, right? Um, and he says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So basically what he's saying is, hey, I am the fulfillment of this scripture. And and like, you know, I could imagine people in their, their, their heads start turning. They're, they're talking, they're whispering, like, who does this guy think he is? And they, at first, they were, they spoke well of him is what the Bible says in 22. And they marveled at his gracious words. Um, but then all of a sudden they said this, this is kind of the, the shifting turning point. Um, they said, isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this Joseph's son, right? So, so Jesus is in Nazareth where he was raised, born and raised. And so these are the people who would have made fun of Mary because, uh, she, she was pregnant before she got married, right? Or, or these are the people who would have seen Jesus at his terrible twos, right? Or these are the people who only knew Jesus as, as the carpenter. They didn't see him as a savior. They didn't see him as anything more than the guy who uh, was, was the woman's son who was basically an adulterer, right? Um, they didn't see him as, as what, what Mary proclaimed him to be, which was the son of God. And so, man, for us, what I thought, what I think is really important for us to see here is, man, the people that we're closest to in our lives will likely always be the people who reject us. And, and I know that's sad to say, um, that may be sad to hear, and, and it's something that I've experienced a lot in my own household, but just because those people reject us doesn't mean we should stop pursuing them. Like, like think about if Jesus would have would have stopped right here at the first set of people who rejected him. We wouldn't be reading, they, like Luke would end 
at Luke chapter 4, verse 30. But no, it continues to go on and, and we continue to read about the miracles. And it's the same for us. Like, like we shouldn't stop pursuing people just because we experience a little bit of rejection. You know, and, and I think about in my life, like, like at home, you know, my mom, for the longest time, rejected a lot of the things that I would say, rejected a lot of the scripture that I would proclaim over. Her. But, you know, through a period of just me constantly praying, constantly just being an example, constantly being steadfast in my faith, like, sometimes that's all people need to see is like, you're going to stay steadfast, even though you've been rejected by them. And so even though, like, I experienced all those things with my mom, like, now, what, six years later, like, She's constantly in church. She's constantly calling me. Hey, man, Pastor Pastor David said this. Pastor Ryan said this. Pastor Mike said this. And and I really liked how he said this. Let's talk about this and this. And and so imagine if I would have just given up. You know, my mom. I'm not saying that she wouldn't be here, but but like, imagine imagine if I would have given up. You know, and 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 like imagine if if I would have stopped because I experienced a little bit of rejection. Like I wouldn't be able to say, you know, hey, my mom is here, doing all these things. Um, and so, man, I think for us, like, it's important to continue to pursue people, even though they reject us, continue to pursue them and see like, you know what, like, I can't let what they say and, and their rejection stop me and, and what God is trying to do in their lives. Like I have what they need. And so I'm just going to continue to be steadfast, even though, um, they're rejecting me. I'm going to continue to pray for them, even though they may not believe in prayer. Um, because the truth is, like, we're fighting a battle in the spiritual realm for them. We're interceding for them. And so even though they may not they may not see it or they may reject us, like, in the physical, like, we're fighting a battle for them spiritually. And, and, and so I think for us, man, we got to continue to pursue people even in rejection. And so for us, like, I think today, um, as you hear this, I think in your small groups, I think you should talk about rejection, how that makes you feel. Maybe where rejection has has stopped you in your tracks from continuing to proclaim what God is doing in your life to other people, and and encourage each other, encourage each other, and and and, and build each other up because man, we need each other right now. We're gonna need each other in the future um, to fall back on when we do experience rejection. And so, man, let me pray for you. I hope this encourages you. Um, just continue fighting the good fight. Continue to fight even when people don't want you to continue to fight even when it doesn't make sense. So God, we thank you for today. God, I thank you for um, just the strength that you give us in the daily, God, in the supernatural to to proclaim the good news to the people. And and I pray that that you would help us um, overcome rejection when it when we do experience it. I pray that you would surround us with the people we need um, to, to encourage us and lift us up when we experience it. So I pray, um, God, that if rejection has been holding us back, God, that we would open up about that and, and you would just, um, would take that off of us and, and we would be built, uh, just on scripture. God would be built on, on and encouraged, um, by each other. And so God, we thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen.